Book XX. Argument. While Ulysses lies in the vestibule of the palace, he is witness to the disorders of the women. Minerva comforts him, and casts him asleep. At his waking he desires a favorable sign from Jupiter, which is granted. The feast of Apollo is celebrated by the people, and the suitors banquet in the palace. Telemachus exerts his authority amongst them, notwithstanding which, Ulysses is insulted by Sisyphus, and the rest continue in their excesses. Strange prodigies are seen by Theoclymenus, the augur, who explains them to the destruction of the wooers. An ample hide divine Ulysses spread. And formed of fleecy skins his humble bed. The remnants of the spoil the suitor crowd. In festival devoured, and victims vowed. Then o'er the chief, Euronymy the chaste. With duteous care a downy carpet cast. With dire revenge his thoughtful bosom glows. And, ruminating wrath, he scorns repose. As thus pavilioned in the porch he lay. Scenes of lewd loves his wakeful eyes survey. Whilst to nocturnal joys impure repair. With wanton glee, the prostituted fair. His heart with rage this new dishonor stung. Wavering his thoughts in dubious balance hung. Or instant should he quench the guilty flame. With their own blood, and intercept the shame. Or to their lust indulge a last embrace. And let the peers consummate the disgrace. Round his swollen heart the murmurous fury rolls. As o'er her young the mother mastiff growls. And bays the stranger groom, so wrath compressed. Recoiling, muttered thunder in his breast. Poor suffering heart. He cried, support the pain. Of wounded honor, and thy rage restrain. Not fiercer woes thy fortitude could foil. When the brave partners of thy ten years toil. Dire polypheme devoured. I then was freed. By patient prudence from the death decreed. Thus anchored safe on reason's peaceful coast. Tempests of wrath his soul no longer tossed. Restless his body rolls, to rage resigned. As one who long with pale-eyed famine pined. The savory cates on glowing embers cast. Incessant turns, impatient for repast. Ulysses so, from side to side devolved. In self-debate the suitor's doom resolved. When in the form of mortal nymph arrayed. From heaven descends the Jove-born martial maid. And hovering o'er his head in view confessed. The goddess thus her favorite care addressed. O thou, of mortals most inured to woes. Why roll those eyes unfriended of repose? Beneath thy palace roof forget thy care. Blessed in thy queen. Blessed in thy blooming air. Whom, to the gods when suppliant fathers bow. They name the standard of their dearest vow. Just as thy kind reproach, the chief rejoined. Deeds full of fate distract my various mind. In contemplation wrapped. This hostile crew. What single arm hath prowess to subdue? Or if, by Jove's and thy auxiliar aid. They're doomed to bleed, O oh say, celestial maid. Where shall Ulysses shun, or how sustain? Nations embattled to revenge the slain. O oh, impotence of faith! Minerva cries. If man on frail unknowing man relies. Doubt you the gods? Lo, Pallas self descends. Inspires thy counsels, and thy toils attends. In me affianced, fortify thy breast. Though myriads league thy rightful claim contest. My sure divinity shall bear the shield. And edge thy sword to reap the glorious field. Now, pay the debt to craving nature due. Her faded powers with balmy rest renew. She ceased, ambrosial slumbers seal his eyes. Her care dissolves in visionary joys. The goddess, pleased, regains her natal skies. Not so the queen. The downy bands of sleep. By grief relaxed she waked again to weep. A gloomy pause ensued of dumb despair. Then thus her fate invoked, with fervent prayer. Diana. Speed thy deathful ebon dart. And cure the pangs of this convulsive heart. Snatch me, 
ye whirlwinds. Far from human race. Tossed through the void illimitable space. Or if dismounted from the rapid cloud. Me with his whelming wave let ocean shroud. So, Pandarus, thy hopes, three orphan fair. Were doomed to wander through the devious air. Thyself untimely, and thy consort died. But four celestials both your cares supplied. Venus in tender delicacy rears. With honey, milk, and wine their infant years. Imperial Juno to their youth assigned. A form majestic, and sagacious mind. With shapely growth Diana graced their bloom. And Pallas taught the texture of the loom. But whilst, to learn their lots in nuptial love. Bright Cytherea sought the bower of Jove. The God supreme, to whose eternal eye. The registers of fate expanded lie. Winged harpies snatched the unguarded charge away. And to the furies bore a grateful prey. Be such my lot. Or thou, Diana, speed. Thy shaft, and send me joyful to the dead. To seek my lord among the warrior train. Ere second vows my bridal faith profane. When woes the waking sense alone assail. Whilst night extends her soft oblivious veil. Of other wretches care the torture ends. No truce the warfare of my heart suspends. The night renews the day distracting theme. And airy terrors sable every dream. The last alone a kind illusion wrought. And to my bed my loved Ulysses brought. In manly bloom, and each majestic grace. As when for Troy he left my fond embrace. Such raptures in my beating bosom rise. I deem it sure a vision of the skies. Thus, whilst Aurora mounts her purple throne. In audible laments she breathes her moan. The sounds assault Ulysses' wakeful ear. Misjudging of the cause, a sudden fear. Of his arrival known, the chief alarms. He thinks the queen is rushing to his arms. Upspringing from his couch, with active haste. The fleece and carpet in the dome he placed. The hide, without, imbibed the morning air. And thus the gods invoked with ardent prayer. Jove, and eternal thrones. With heaven to friend. If the long series of my woes shall end. Of human race now rising from repose. Let one a blissful omen here disclose. And, to confirm my faith, propitious Jove. Vouchsafe the sanction of a sign above. Whilst lowly thus the chief adoring bows. The pitying God his guardian aid avows. Loud from a sapphire sky his thunder sounds. With springing hope the hero's heart rebounds. Soon, with consummate joy to crown his prayer. An omened voice invades his ravished ear. Beneath a pile that closed the dome adjoined. Twelve female slaves the gift of Ceres grind. Tasked for the royal board to bolt the bran. From the pure flower, the growth and strength of man. Discharging to the day the labor due. Now early to repose the rest withdrew. One made unequal to the task assigned. Still turned the toilsome mill with anxious mind. And thus in bitterness of soul divined. Father of gods and men, whose thunders roll. O'er the cerulean vault, and shake the pole. Who are from heaven has gained this rare ostent. Of granted vows a certain signal sent. In this blessed moment of accepted prayer. Piteous, regard a wretch consumed with care. Instant, O Jove. Confound the suitor train. For whom o'er toiled I grind the golden grain. Far from this dome the lewd devourers cast. And be this festival decreed their last. Big with their doom denounced in earth and sky. Ulysses' heart dilates with secret joy. Meantime the menial train with unctuous wood. Heaped high the genial hearth, Vulcanian food. When, early dressed, advanced the royal heir. With manly grasp he waved a martial spear. A radiant saber graced his purple zone. And on his foot the golden sandal shone. His steps impetuous to the portal pressed. And Euryclea thus he there addressed. 
Say thou to whom my youth its nurture owes. Was care for due refection and repose. Bestowed the stranger guest. Or waits he grieved. His age not honoured, nor his wants relieved. Promiscuous grace on all the queen confers. In woes bewildered, oft the wisest heirs. The wordy vagrant to the dole aspires. And modest worth with noble scorn retires. She thus, O oh cease that ever honoured name. To blemish now, it ill deserves your blame. A bowl of generous wine sufficed the guest. In vain the queen the night refection pressed. Nor would he court repose in downy state. Unblessed, abandoned to the rage of fate. A hide beneath the portico was spread. And fleecy skins composed an humble bed. A downy carpet cast with duteous care. Secured him from the keen nocturnal air. His cornell javelin poised with regal port. To the sage Greeks convened in Themis court. Forth issuing from the dome the prince repaired. Two dogs of chase, a lion-hearted guard. Behind him sourly stalked. Without delay. The dame divides the labor of the day. Thus urging to the toil the menial train. What marks of luxury the marble stain. Its wonted luster let the floor regain. The seats with purple cloth in order do. And let the abstersive sponge the board renew. Let some refresh the vase's sullied mold. Some bid the goblets boast their native gold. Some to the spring, with each a jar, repair. And copious waters pure for bathing bear. Dispatch. For soon the suitors will essay. The lunar feast rites to the god of day. She said, with duteous haste a bevy fair. Of twenty virgins to the spring repair. With varied toils the rest adorn the dome. Magnificent, and blithe, the suitors come. Some wield the sounding axe. The doddered oaks. Divide, obedient to the forceful strokes. Soon from the fount, with each a brimming urn. Eumius in their train, the maids return. Three porkers for the feast, all brawny chined. He brought, the choicest of the tusky kind. In lodgments first secure his care he viewed. Then to the king this friendly speech renewed. Now say sincere, my guest. The suitor train. Still treat thy worth with lordly dull disdain. Or speaks their deed a bounteous mind humane. Some pitying God, Ulysses sad replied. With volleyed vengeance blast their towering pride. No conscious blush, no sense of right, restrains. The tides of lust that swell the boiling veins. From vice to vice their appetites are tossed. All cheaply sated at another's cost. While thus the chief his woes indignant told. Melanthius, master of the bearded fold. The goodliest goats of all the royal herd. Spontaneous to the suitor's feast preferred. Two grooms' assistant bore the victims bound. With quavering cries the vaulted roofs resound. And to the chief austere aloud began. The wretch unfriendly to the race of man. Here vagrant, still. Offensive to my lords. Blows have more energy than airy words. These arguments I'll use, nor conscious shame. Nor threats, thy bold intrusion will reclaim. On this high feast the meanest vulgar boast. A plenteous board. Hence. Seek another host. Rejoinder to the churl the king disdained. But shook his head, and rising wrath restrained. From Cephalenia crossed the surgy main. Phileetius late arrived, a faithful swain. A steer ungrateful to the bull's embrace. And goats he brought, the pride of all their race. Imported in a shallop not his own. The dome re-echoed to the mingled moan. Straight to the guardian of the bristly kind. He thus began, benevolent of mind. What guest is he, of such majestic air? His lineage and paternal clime declare. Dim through the eclipse of fate, the rays divine. Of sovereign state with faded splendor shine. If monarchs by the gods are plunged in woe. To what abyss are we foredoomed to go? 
Then affable he thus the chief addressed. Whilst with pathetic warmth his hand he pressed. Stranger, may fate a milder aspect show. And spin thy future with a whiter clue. O Jove! For ever deaf to human cries. The tyrant, not the father of the skies. Unpiteous of the race thy will began. The fool of fate, thy manufacture, man. With penury, contempt, repulse, and care. The galling load of life is doomed to bear. Ulysses from his state a wanderer still. Upbraids thy power, thy wisdom, or thy will. O monarch ever dear, O man of woe! Fresh flow my tears, and shall for ever flow. Like thee, poor stranger guest, denied his home. Like thee, in rags obscene decreed to roam. Or, haply perished on some distant coast. In Stygian gloom he glides, a pensive ghost. Oh, grateful for the good his bounty gave. I'll grieve, till sorrow sink me to the grave. His kind protecting hand my youth preferred. The regent of his Cephalenian herd. With vast increase beneath my care it spreads. A stately breed. And blackens far the meads. Constrained, the choicest beeves I thence import. To cram these cormorants that crowd his court. Who in partition seek his realm to share. Nor human right nor wrath divine revere. Since here resolved oppressive these reside. Contending doubts my anxious heart divide. Now to some foreign clime inclined to fly. And with the royal herd protection by. Then, happier thoughts return the nodding scale. Light mounts despair, alternate hopes prevail. In opening prospects of ideal joy. My king returns, the proud usurpers die. To whom the chief, in thy capacious mind. Since daring zeal with cool debate is joined. Attend a deed already ripe in fate. Attest, O Jove. The truth I now relate. This sacred truth attest, each genial power. Who bless the board, and guard this friendly bower. Before thou quit the dome, nor long delay. Thy wish produced an act, with pleased survey. Thy wondering eyes shall view, his rightful reign. By arms avowed Ulysses shall regain. And to the shades devote the suitor train. O Jove Supreme! The raptured swain replies. With deeds consummate soon the promised joys. These aged nerves, with newborn vigor strung. In that blessed cause should emulate the young. A sense humious to the prayer addressed. And equal ardors fire his loyal breast. Meantime the suitors urge the prince's fate. And deathful arts employ the dire debate. When in his airy tour, the bird of Jove. Trust with his sinewy pounce a trembling dove. Sinister to their hope. This omen eyed. Amphinomus, who thus presaging cried. The gods from force and fraud the prince defend. O peers. The sanguinary scheme suspend. Your future thought let sable fate employ. And give the present hour to genial joy. From council straight the assenting peerage ceased. And in the dome prepared the genial feast. Disrobed, their vests apart in order lay. Then all with speed succinct the victim slay. With sheep and shaggy goats the porkers bled. And the proud steer was on the marble spread. With fire prepared, they deal the morsels round. Wine, rosy bright, the brimming goblets crowned. By sage Eumius born, the purple tide. Melanthius from an ample jar supplied. High canisters of bread Phileetius placed. And eager all devour the rich repast. Disposed apart, Ulysses shares the treat. A trivet table, an ignobler seat. The prince appoints, but to his sire assigns. The tasteful inwards, and nectareous wines. Partake, my guest, he cried, without control. The social feast, and drain the cheering bowl. Dread not the railer's laugh, nor ruffian's rage. No vulgar roof protects thy honored age. This dome a refuge to thy wrongs shall be. 
for my great sire too soon devolved to me. Your violence and scorn, ye suitors, cease. Lest arms avenge the violated peace. Awed by the prince, so haughty, brave, and young. Rage gnawed the lip, amazement chained the tongue. Be patient, peers. At length Antinous cries. The threats of vain imperious youth despise. Would Jove permit the meditated blow? That stream of eloquence should cease to flow. Without reply vouchsafed, Antinous ceased. Meanwhile the pomp of festival increased. By heralds ranked. In marshaled order move. The city tribes, to please Apollo's grove. Beneath the verdure of which awful shade. The lunar hecatomb they grateful laid. Partook the sacred feast, and ritual honors paid. But the rich banquet, in the dome prepared. An humble sideboard set, Ulysses shared. Observant of the prince's high behest. His menial train attend the stranger guest. Whom Pallas with unpardoning fury fired. By lordly pride and keen reproach inspired. A Samian peer, more studious than the rest. A vice, who teemed with many a dead-born jest. And urged, for title to a consort queen. Unnumbered acres arable and green. Tisippus named. This lord Ulysses eyed. And thus burst out the impostimate with pride. The sentence I propose, ye peers, attend. Since due regard must wait the prince's friend. Let each a token of esteem bestow. This gift acquits the dear respect I owe. With which he nobly may discharge his seat. And pay the menials for a master's treat. He said, and of the steer before him placed. That sinewy fragment at Ulysses cast. Where to the pastern bone, by nerves combined. The well-horned foot indissolubly joined. Which whizzing high, the wall unseemly signed. The chief indignant grins a ghastly smile. Revenge and scorn within his bosom boil. When thus the prince with pious rage inflamed. Had not the inglorious wound thy malice aimed. Fallen guiltless of the mark. My certain spear. Had made thee by the brutal triumph dear. Nor should thy sire a queen his daughter boast. The suitor, now, had vanished in a ghost. No more. Ye lewd compeers, with lawless power. Invade my dome, my herds and flocks devour. For genuine worth, of age mature to know. My grape shall redden, and my harvest grow. Or. If each other's wrongs ye still support. With rapes and riot to profane my court. What single arm with numbers can contend? On me let all your lifted swords descend and with my life such vile dishonors end. A long cessation of discourse ensued. By gentler agilos thus renewed. A just reproof, ye peers. Your rage restrain. From the protected guest, and menial train. And, prince. To stop the source of future ill. Assent yourself, and gain the royal will. Whilst hope prevailed to see your sire restored. Of right the queen refused a second lord. But who so vain of faith, so blind to fate. To think he still survives to claim the state. Now press the sovereign dame with warm desire. To wed, as wealth or worth her choice inspire. The lord selected to the nuptial joys. Far hence will lead the long contested prize. Whilst in paternal pomp with plenty blessed. You reign. Of this imperial dome possessed. Sage and serene Telemachus replies. By him at whose behest the thunder flies. And by the name on earth I most revere. By great Ulysses and his woes I swear. Who never must review his dear domain. Enrolled, perhaps, in Pluto's dreary train. Weener her choice the royal dame of ours. My bridal gifts shall load the future spouse. But from this dome my parent queen to chase. From me, ye gods. Avert such dire disgrace. But palace clouds with intellectual gloom. 
the suitors' souls, insensate of their doom. A mirthful frenzy seized the faded crowd. The roofs resound with causeless laughter loud. Floating in gore, portentous to survey. In each discolored vase the viands lay. Then down each cheek the tears spontaneous flow. And sudden sighs precede approaching woe. In vision rapt, the hyperesian seer. Uprose, and thus divine the vengeance near. O race to death devote. With Stygian shade. Each destined peer impending fates invade. With tears your wan distorted cheeks are drowned. With sanguine drops the walls are rubied round. Thick swarms the spacious hall with howling ghosts. To people Orcus, and the burning coasts. Nor gives the sun his golden orb to roll. But universal night usurps the pole. Yet warned in vain, with laughter loud elate. The peers reproach the sure divine of fate. And thus Eurymachus, the dotard's mind. To every sense is lost, to reason blind. Swift from the dome conduct the slave away. Let him in open air behold the day. Tax not, the heaven illumined seer rejoined. Of rage, or folly, my prophetic mind. No clouds of error dim the ethereal rays. Her equal power each faithful sense obeys. Unguided hence my trembling steps I bend. Far hence, before yon hovering deaths descend. Lest the ripe harvest of revenge begun. I share the doom ye suitors cannot shun. This said, to sage Piraeus sped the seer. His honored host, a welcome inmate there. O'er the protracted feast the suitors sit and aim to wound the prince with pointless wit. Cries one, with scornful leer and mimic voice. Thy charity we praise, but not thy choice. Why such profusion of indulgence shown? To this poor, timorous, toil-detesting drone. That others feeds on planetary schemes. And pays his host with hideous noonday dreams. But, prince. For once at least believe a friend. To some Sicilian mart these courtiers send. Where, if they yield their freight across the main. Dear sell the slaves. Demand no greater gain. Thus jovial they, but not the prince replies. Full on his sire he rolled his ardent eyes. Impatient straight to flesh his virgin sword. From the wise chief he waits the deathful word. Nigh in her bright alcove, the pensive queen. To see the circle sate, of all unseen. Sated at length they rise, and bid prepare. An eve repast, with equal cost and care. But vengeful Pallas, with preventing speed. A feast proportioned to their crimes decreed. A feast of death, the feasters doomed to bleed. Book 21. Argument. The bending of Ulysses' bow. Penelope, to put an end to the solicitation of the suitors, proposes to marry the person who shall first bend the bow of Ulysses, and shoot through the ringlets. After their attempts have proved ineffectual, Ulysses, taking Eumaeus and Phileetius apart, discovers himself to them. Then returning, desires leave to try his strength at the bow, which, though refused with indignation by the suitors, Penelope and Telemachus cause it to be delivered to his hands. He bends it immediately, and shoots through all the rings. Jupiter at the same instant thunders from heaven, Ulysses accepts the omen, and gives a sign to Telemachus, who stands ready armed at his side. And Pallas now, to raise the rival's fires. With her own art Penelope inspires. Who now can bend Ulysses' bow, and wing. The well-aimed arrow through the distant ring. Shall end the strife. And win the imperial dame. But discord and black death await the game. The prudent queen the lofty stair ascends. At distance do a virgin train attends. A brazen key she held, the handle turned. With steel and polished elephant adorned. Swift to the inmost room she bent her way. Where, safe reposed, the royal treasures lay. There shone high heaped the labored brass and ore. And there the bow which great Ulysses bore. And there the quiver, where now guiltless slept. 
those winged deaths that many a matron wept. This gift, long since when Sparta's shore he trod. On young Ulysses Iphidus bestowed. Beneath Orsilicus' roof they met. One loss was private, one a public debt. Messina's state from Ithaca detains. Three hundred sheep, and all the shepherd swains. And to the youthful prince to urge the laws. The king and elders trust their common cause. But Iphidus, employed on other cares, searched the wide country for his wandering mares. And mules, the strongest of the laboring kind. Hapless to search, more hapless still to find. For journeying on to Hercules, at length. That lawless wretch, that man of brutal strength. Deaf to heaven's voice, the social rights transgressed. And for the beauteous Mares destroyed his guest. He gave the bow. And on Ulysses' part. Received a pointed sword, and missile dart. Of luckless friendship on a foreign shore. Their first, last pledges. For they met no more. The bow, bequeathed by this unhappy hand. Ulysses bore not from his native land. Nor in the front of battle taught to bend. But kept in dear memorial of his friend. Now gently winding up the fair ascent. By many an easy step the matron went. Then o'er the pavement glides with grace divine. With polished oak the level pavements shine. The folding gates a dazzling light displayed. With pomp of various architrave o'erlaid. The bolt, obedient to the silken string. Forsakes the staple as she pulls the ring. The wards respondent to the key turn round. The bars fall back, the flying valves resound. Loud as a bull makes hill and valley ring. So roared the lock when it released the spring. She moves majestic through the wealthy room. Where treasured garments cast a rich perfume. There from the column where aloft it hung. Reached in its splendid case, the bow unstrung. Across her knees she laid the well-known bow. And pensive sate, and tears began to flow. To full satiety of grief she mourns. Then silent to the joyous hall returns. To the proud suitor's bears in pensive state. The unbended bow, and arrows winged with fate. Behind, her train the polished coffer brings. Which held the alternate brass and silver rings. Full in the portal the chaste queen appears. And with her veil conceals the coming tears. On either side awaits a virgin fair. While thus the matron, with majestic air. Say you, when these forbidden walls enclose. For whom my victims bleed, my vintage flows. If these neglected, faded charms can move. Or is it but a vain pretense, you love? If I the prize, if me you seek to wife. Hear the conditions, and commence the strife. Who first Ulysses' wondrous bow shall bend. And through twelve ringlets the fleet arrow send. Him will I follow, and forsake my home. For him forsake this loved, this wealthy dome. Long, long the scene of all my past delight. And still to last, the vision of my night. Graceful she said, and bade Eumius show. The rival peers the ringlets and the bow. From his full eyes the tears unbidden spring. Touched at the dear memorials of his king. Phileetius too relents, but secret shed. The tender drops. Antinous saw, and said. Hence to your fields, ye rustics. Hence away. Nor stain with grief the pleasures of the day. Nor to the royal heart recall in vain. The sad remembrance of a perished man. Enough her precious tears already flow. Or share the feast with due respect, or go. To weep abroad, and leave to us the bow. No vulgar task. Ill suits this courtly crew. That stubborn horn which brave Ulysses drew. I well remember, for I gazed him o'er. While yet a child, what majesty he bore. And still, all infant as I was, retain. The port, the strength, the grandeur of the man. He said, but in his soul fond joys arise. And his proud hopes already win the prize. 
to speed the flying shaft through every ring. Wretch! Is not thine, the arrows of the king. Shall end those hopes, and fate is on the wing. Then thus Telemachus, some god I find. With pleasing frenzy has possessed my mind. When a loved mother threatens to depart. Why with this ill-timed gladness leaps my heart? Come then, ye suitors. And dispute a prize. Richer than all the Achaean state supplies. Then all proud Argos, or Mykena knows. Then all our isles or continents enclose. A woman matchless, and almost divine. Fit for the praise of every tongue but mine. No more excuses then, no more delay. Haste to the trial, lo! I lead the way. I too may try, and if this arm can wing. The feathered arrow through the destined ring. Then if no happier knight the conquest boast. I shall not sorrow for a mother lost. But, blessed in her, possess those arms alone. Heir of my father's strength, as well as throne. He spoke, then rising, his broad sword unbound. And cast his purple garment on the ground. A trench he opened, in a line he placed. The level axes, and the points made fast. His perfect skill the wondering gazers eyed. The game as yet unseen, as yet untried. Then, with a manly pace, he took his stand. And grasped the bow, and twanged it in his hand. Three times, with beating heart, he made essay. Three times, unequal to the task, gave way. A modest boldness on his cheek appeared. And thrice he hoped, and thrice again he feared. The fourth had drawn it. The great sire with joy. Beheld, but with a sign forbade the boy. His ardor straight the obedient prince suppressed. And, artful, thus the suitor train addressed. O oh, lay the cause on youth yet immature. For heaven forbid such weakness should endure. How shall this arm, unequal to the bow, retort an insult, or repel a foe? But you, whom heaven with better nerves has blessed, accept the trial, and the prize contest. He cast the bow before him, and apart. Against the polished quiver propped the dart. Resuming then his seat, Yupith's son. The bold Antinous, to the rest begun. From where the goblet first begins to flow. From right to left in order take the bow. And prove your several strengths. The princes heard. And first Leod's, blameless priest, appeared. The eldest born of Enop's noble race. Who next the goblet held his holy place. He, only he, of all the suitor throng. Their deeds detested, and abjured the wrong. With tender hands the stubborn horn he strains. The stubborn horn resisted all his pains. Already in despair he gives it o'er. Take it who will, he cries, I strive no more. What numerous deaths attend this fatal bow? What souls and spirits shall it send below? Better, indeed, to die, and fairly give. Nature her debt, than disappointed live. With each new sun to some new hope a prey. Yet still tomorrow falser than today. How long in vain Penelope we sought. This bow shall ease us of that idle thought. And send us with some humbler wife to live. Whom gold shall gain, or destiny shall give. Thus speaking, on the floor the bow he placed. With rich inlay the various floor was graced. At distance far the feathered shaft he throws. And to the seat returns from whence he rose. To him Antinous thus with fury said. What words elomen from thy lips have fled? Thy coward function ever is in fear. Those arms are dreadful which thou canst not bear. Why should this bow be fatal to the brave? Because the priest is born a peaceful slave. Mark then what others can. He ended there. And bade Melanthius a vast pile prepare. He gives it instant flame, then fast beside. Spreads o'er an ample board a bullock's hide. With melted lard they soak the weapon o'er. Chafe every knot, and supple every pore. 
Vain all their art, and all their strength as vain. The bow inflexible resists their pain. The force of great Eurymachus alone. And bold Antinous, yet untired, unknown. Those only now remained, but those confessed. Of all the train the mightiest and the best. Then from the hall, and from the noisy crew. The masters of the herd and flock withdrew. The king observes them, he the hall forsakes. And, past the limits of the court, o'ertakes. Then thus with accent mild Ulysses spoke. Ye faithful guardians of the herd and flock. Shall I the secret of my breast conceal? Or, as my soul now dictates, shall I tell? Say, should some favoring God restore again. The lost Ulysses to his native reign. How beat your hearts? What aid would you afford? To the proud suitors, or your ancient lord? Phileetius thus, oh were thy word not vain. Would mighty Jove restore that man again? These aged sinews, with new vigor strung. In his blessed cause should emulate the young. With equal vows Eumius too implored. Each power above, with wishes for his lord. He saw their secret souls, and thus began. Those vows the gods accord, behold the man. Your own Ulysses. Twice ten years detained. By woes and wanderings from this hapless land. At length he comes. But comes despised, unknown. And finding faithful you, and you alone. All else have cast him from their very thought. E'en in their wishes and their prayers forgot. Here then, my friends, if Jove this arm succeed. And give yon impious revellers to bleed. My care shall be to bless your future lives. With large possessions and with faithful wives. Fast by my palace shall your domes ascend. And each on young Telemachus attend. And each be called his brother and my friend. To give you firmer faith, now trust your eye. Lo! The broad scar indented on my thigh. When with Autolycus sons, of your. On Parnas top I chased the tusky boar. His ragged vest then drawn aside disclosed. The sign conspicuous, and the scar exposed. Eager they viewed, with joy they stood amazed. With tearful eyes o'er all their master gazed. Around his neck their longing arms they cast. His head. His shoulders, and his knees embraced. Tears followed tears, no word was in their power. In solemn silence fell the kindly shower. The king too weeps, the king too grasps their hands. And moveless, as a marble fountain, stands. Thus had their joy wept down the setting sun. But first the wise man ceased, and thus begun. Enough, on other cares your thought employ. For danger waits on all untimely joy. Full many foes and fierce, observe us near. Some may betray, and yonder walls may hear. Re-enter then, not all at once, but stay. Some moments you, and let me lead the way. To me, neglected as I am I know. The haughty suitors will deny the bow. But thou, Eumius, as, tis borne away. Thy master's weapon to his hand convey. At every portal let some matron wait. And each lock fast the well-compacted gate. Close let them keep, whatever invades their ear. Though arms, or shouts, or dying groans they hear. To thy strict charge, Phileetius, we consign. The court's main gate, to guard that pass be thine. This said, he first returned, the faithful swains. At distance follow, as their king ordains. Before the flame Eurymachus now stands. And turns the bow, and chafes it with his hands. Still the tough bow unmoved. The lofty man. Sight from his mighty soul, and thus began. I mourn the common cause, for, oh, my friends. On me, on all, what grief, what shame attends. Not the lost nuptials can affect me more. For Greece has beauteous dames on every shore. But baffled thus. Confessed so far below. Ulysses' strength, 
as not to bend his bow. How shall all ages our attempt deride? Our weakness scorn. Antonus thus replied. Not so, Eurymachus, that no man draws. The wondrous bow, attend another cause. Sacred to Phoebus is the solemn day. Which thoughtless we in games would waste away. Till the next dawn this ill time strife forego. And here leave fixed the ringlets in a row. Now bid the sewer approach, and let us join. In due libations, and in rites divine. So end our night, before the day shall spring. The choicest offerings let Melanthius bring. Let then to Phoebus name the fatted thighs. Feed the rich smokes high curling to the skies. So shall the patron of these arts bestow. For his the gift, the skill to bend the bow. They heard well pleased, the ready heralds bring. The cleansing waters from the limpid spring. The goblet high with rosy wine they crowned. In order circling to the peers around. That right complete, uprose the thoughtful man. And thus his meditated scheme began. If what I ask your noble minds approve. Ye peers and rivals in the royal love. Chief, if it hurt not great Antinous' ear. Whose sage decision I with wonder hear. And if Eurymachus the motion please. Give heaven this day and rest the bow in peace. Tomorrow let your arms dispute the prize. And take it he, the favoured of the skies. But, since till then this trial you delay. Trust it one moment to my hands today. Fain would I prove, before your judging eyes. What once I was, whom wretched you despise. If yet this arm its ancient force retain. Or if my woes, a long continued train. And wants and insults, make me less than man. Rage flashed in lightning from the suitor's eyes. Yet mixed with terror at the bold emprise. Antinous then, O oh miserable guest! Is common sense quite banished from thy breast? Sufficed it not, within the palace placed. To sit distinguished, with our presence graced. Admitted here with princes to confer. A man unknown, a needy wanderer. To copious wine this insolence we owe. And much thy betters wine can overthrow. The great Eurition, when this frenzy stung. Pyrithoas roofs with frantic riot rung. Boundless the centaur raged. Till one and all. The heroes rose, and dragged him from the hall. His nose they shortened, and his ears they slit. And sent him sobered home, with better wit. Hence with long war the double race was cursed. Fatal to all, but to the aggressor first. Such fate I prophesy our guest attends. If here this interdicted bow he bends. Nor shall these walls such insolence contain. The first fair wind transports him o'er the main. Where Echidus to death the guilty brings. The worst of mortals. E'en the worst of kings. Better than that, if thou approve our cheer. Cease the mad strife and share our bounty here. To this the queen her just dislike expressed. Tis impious, prince, to harm the stranger guest. Base to insult who bears a suppliant's name. And some respect Telemachus may claim. What if the immortals on the man bestow? Sufficient strength to draw the mighty bow. Shall I, a queen, by rival chiefs adored? Accept a wandering stranger for my lord? A hope so idle never touched his brain. Then ease your bosoms of a fear so vain. Far be he banished from this stately scene. Who wrongs his princess with a thought so mean? O oh fair! And wisest of so fair a kind! Respectful thus Eurymachus rejoined. Moved by no weak surmise, but sense of shame. We dread the all arraigning voice of fame. We dread the censure of the meanest slave. The weakest woman, all can wrong the brave. Behold what wretches to the bed pretend. Of that brave chief whose bow they could not bend. In came a beggar of the strolling crew. And did what all those princes could not do. Thus will the common voice our deed defame. And thus posterity upbraid our name. To whom the queen, 
if fame engage your views. Forbear those acts which infamy pursues. Wrong and oppression no renown can raise. No, friend. That virtue is the path to praise. The stature of our guest, his port, his face. Speak him descended from no vulgar race. To him the bow, as he desires, convey. And to his hand if Phoebus give the day. Hence, to reward his merit, be shall bear. A two-edged falchion and a shining spear. Embroidered sandals, a rich cloak and vest. A safe conveyance to his port of rest. O royal mother! Ever honored name! Permit me, cries Telemachus, to claim. A son's just right. No Grecian prince but I. Has power this bow to grant or to deny. Of all that Ithaca's rough hills contain. And all wide Ellis' coarser breeding plain. To me alone my father's arms descend. And mine alone they are, to give or lend. Retire, O queen. Thy household task resume. Tend, with thy maids, the labors of thy loom. The bow, the darts, and arms of chivalry. These cares to man belong, and most to me. Mature beyond his years, the queen admired. His sage reply, and with her train retired. There in her chamber as she sat apart. Revolved his words, and placed them in her heart. On her Ulysses then she fixed her soul. Down her fair cheek the tears abundant roll. Till gentle Pallas, piteous of her cries. In slumber closed her silver streaming eyes. Now through the press the bow Eumius bore. And all was riot, noise, and wild uproar. Hold! Lawless rustic! Whither wilt thou go? To whom, insensate, dost thou bear the bow? Exiled for this to some sequestered den. Far from the sweet society of men. To thy own dogs a prey thou shalt be made. If heaven and Phoebus lend the suitor's aid. Thus they. Aghast he laid the weapon down. But bold Telemachus thus urged him on. Proceed, false slave, and slight their empty words. What? Hopes the fool to please so many lords. Young as I am, thy prince's vengeful hand. Stretched forth in wrath shall drive thee from the land. Oh! Could the vigor of this arm as well. The oppressive suitors from my walls expel. Then what a shoal of lawless men should go. To fill with tumult the dark courts below. The suitors with a scornful smile survey. The youth, indulging in the genial day. Eumius, thus encouraged, hastes to bring. The strifeful bow and gives it to the king. Old Euryclea calling then aside. Hear what Telemachus enjoins, he cried. At every portal let some matron wait. And each lock fast the well-compacted gate. And if unusual sounds invade their ear. If arms, or shouts, or dying groans they hear. Let none to call or issue forth presume. But close attend the labors of the loom. Her prompt obedience on his order waits. Closed in an instant were the palace gates. In the same moment forth Phileetius flies. Secures the court, and with a cable ties. The utmost gate, the cable strongly wrought. Of Byblos reed, a ship from Egypt brought. Then unperceived and silent at the board. His seat he takes, his eyes upon his lord. And now his well-known bow the master bore. Turned on all sides, and viewed it o'er and o'er. Less time or worms had done the weapon wrong. Its owner absent, and untried so long. While some deriding, how he turns the bow. Some other like it sure the man must know. Or else would copy, or in bows he deals. Perhaps he makes them, or perhaps he steals. Heaven to this wretch, another cried, be kind. And bless, in all to which he stands inclined. With such good fortune as he now shall find. Heedless he heard them, but disdained reply. The bow perusing with exactest eye. Then, as some heavenly minstrel, taught to sing. 
high notes responsive to the trembling string. To some new strain when he adapts the lyre. Or the dumb lute refits with vocal wire. Relaxes, strains, and draws them to and fro. So the great master drew the mighty bow. And drew with ease. One hand aloft displayed. The bending horns, and one the string essayed. From his essaying hand the string, let fly. Twanged short and sharp like the shrill swallow's cry. A general horror ran through all the race. Sunk was each heart, and pale was every face. Signs from above ensued, the unfolding sky. In lightning burst, Jove thundered from on high. Fired at the call of heaven's almighty Lord. He snatched the shaft that glittered on the board. Fast by, the rest lay sleeping in the sheath. But soon to fly the messengers of death. Now sitting as he was, the cord he drew. Through every ringlet leveling his view. Then notched the shaft, released, and gave it wing. The whizzing arrow vanished from the string. Sung on direct, and threaded every ring. The solid gate its fury scarcely bounds. Pierced through and through the solid gate resounds. Then to the prince, nor have I wrought thee shame. Nor erred this hand unfaithful to its aim. Nor proved the toil too hard. Nor have I lost. That ancient vigor, once my pride and boast. Ill I deserve these haughty peers' disdain. Now let them comfort their dejected train. In sweet repast their present hour employ. Nor wait till evening for the genial joy. Then to the lute's soft voice prolong the night. Music, the banquet's most refined delight. He said, then gave a nod, and at the word. Telemachus girds on his shining sword. Fast by his father's side he takes his stand. The beamy javelin lightens in his hand. Book 22. Argument. The Death of the Suitors. Ulysses begins the slaughter of the suitors by the death of Antinous. He declares himself, and lets fly his arrows at the rest. Telemachus assists and brings arms for his father, himself, Eumaeus, and Philoetius. Melanthius does the same for the wooers. Minerva encourages Ulysses in the shape of mentor. The suitors are all slain, only Medon and Phemius are spared. Melanthius and the unfaithful servants are executed. The rest acknowledge their master with all demonstrations of joy. Then fierce the hero o'er the threshold strode. Stripped of his rags, he blazed out like a god. Full in their face the lifted bow he bore. And quivered deaths, a formidable store. Before his feet the rattling shower he threw. And thus, terrific, to the suitor crew. One venturous game this hand hath won today. Another, princes. Yet remains to play. Another mark our arrow must attain. Phoebus, assist. Nor be the labor vain. Swift as the word the parting arrow sings. And bears thy fate, Antinous, on its wings. Wretch that he was, of unprophetic soul. High in his hands he reared the golden bowl. E'en then to drain it lengthened out his breath. Changed to the deep, the bitter draught of death. For fate who feared amidst a feastful band. And fate to numbers, by a single hand. Full through his throat Ulysses' weapon passed. And pierced his neck. He falls, and breathes his last. The tumbling goblet the wide floor overflows. A stream of gore burst spouting from his nose. Grim in convulsive agonies be sprawls. Before him spurn the loaded table falls. And spreads the pavement with a mingled flood. Of floating meats, and wine, and human blood. Amazed, confounded, as they saw him fall. Up rose the throngs tumultuous round the hall. O'er all the dome they cast a haggard eye. Each looked for arms, in vain, no arms were nigh. Aim'st thou at princes? All amazed they said winky face. Thy last of games unhappy hast thou played. Thy erring shaft has made our bravest bleed. And death, unlucky guest, attends thy deed. 
vultures shall tear thee. Thus in sense they spoke. While each to chance ascribed the wondrous stroke. Blind as they were, for death e'en now invades. His destined prey, and wraps them all in shades. Then, grimly frowning, with a dreadful look. That withered all their hearts, Ulysses spoke. Dogs, ye have had your day. Ye feared no more. Ulysses vengeful from the Trojan shore. While, to your lust and spoil a guardless prey. Our house, our wealth, our helpless handmaids lay. Not so content, with bolder frenzy fired. E'en to our bed presumptuous you aspired. Laws or divine or human failed to move. Or shame of men. Or dread of gods above. Heedless alike of infamy or praise. Or fame's eternal voice in future days. The hour of vengeance, wretches, now is come. Impending fate is yours, and instant doom. Thus dreadful he. Confused the suitors stood. From their pale cheeks recedes the flying blood. Trembling they sought their guilty heads to hide. Alone the bold Eurymachus replied. If, as thy words import, he thus began. Ulysses lives, and thou the mighty man. Great are thy wrongs, and much hast thou sustained. In thy spoiled palace, and exhausted land. The cause and author of those guilty deeds. Lo! At thy feet unjust Antinous bleeds. Not love, but wild ambition was his guide. To slay thy son, thy kingdom to divide. These were his aims, but juster Jove denied. Since cold in death the offender lies, O oh spare. Thy suppliant people, and receive their prayer. Brass, gold, and treasures, shall the spoil defray. Two hundred oxen every prince shall pay. The waste of years refunded in a day. Till then thy wrath is just. Ulysses burned. With high disdain, and sternly thus returned. All, all the treasure that enriched our throne. Before your rapins, joined with all your own. If offered, vainly should for mercy call. Tis you that offer, and I scorn them all. Your blood is my demand, your lives the prize. Till pale as yonder wretch each suitor lies. Hence with those coward terms, or fight or fly. This choice is left you, to resist or die. And die I trust ye shall. He sternly spoke. With guilty fears the pale assembly shook. Alone Eurymachus exhorts the train. Yon archer, comrades, will not shoot in vain. But from the threshold shall his darts be sped. Who or he be, till every prince lie dead. Be mindful of yourselves, draw forth your swords. And to his shafts obtend these ample boards. So need compels. Then, all united, strive. The bold invader from his post to drive. The city roused shall to our rescue haste. And this mad archer soon have shot his last. Swift as he spoke, he drew his traitor sword. And like a lion rushed against his lord. The wary chief the rushing foe repressed. Who met the point and forced it in his breast. His falling hand deserts the lifted sword. And prone he falls extended o'er the board. Before him wide, in mixed effusion roll. The untasted viands, and the jovial bowl. Full through his liver past the mortal wound. With dying rage his forehead beats the ground. He spurned the seat with fury as he fell. And the fierce soul to darkness dived, and hell. Next bold Amphinomus his arm extends. To force the pass, the godlike man defends. Thy spear, Telemachus, prevents the attack. The brazen weapon driving through his back. Thence through his breast its bloody passage tore. Flat falls he thundering on the marble floor. And his crushed forehead marks the stone with gore. He left his javelin in the dead, for fear. The long encumbrance of the weighty spear. To the fierce foe advantage might afford. To rush between and use the shortened sword. With speedy ardor to his sire he flies. And, arm, great father. 
arm, in haste he cries. Lo, hence I run for other arms to wield. For missive javelins, and for helm and shield. Fast by our side let either faithful swain. In arms attend us, and their part sustain. Haste, and return, Ulysses made reply. While yet the auxiliar shafts this hand supply. Lest thus alone, encountered by an host. Driven from the gate, the important pass be lost. With speed Telemachus obeys, and flies. Where piled in heaps the royal armor lies. For brazen helmets, eight refulgent spears. And four broad bucklers to his sire he bears. At once in brazen panoply they shone. At once each servant braced his armor on. Around their king a faithful guard they stand. While yet each shaft flew deathful from his hand. Chief after chief expired at every wound. And swelled the bleeding mountain on the ground. Soon as his store of flying fates was spent. Against the wall he set the bow unbent. And now his shoulders bear the massy shield. And now his hands two beamy javelins wield. He frowns beneath his nodding plume, that played. O'er the high crest, and cast a dreadful shade. There stood a window near, whence looking down. From o'er the porch appeared the subject town. A double strength of valves secured the place. A high and narrow, but the only pass. The cautious king, with all preventing care. To guard that outlet, placed Eumius there. When Agilos thus, has none the sense. To mount yon window, an alarm from thence. The neighbor town. The town shall force the door. And this bold archer soon shall shoot no more. Melanthius then, that outlet to the gate. So near adjoins, that one may guard the strait. But other methods of defense remain. Myself with arms can furnish all the train. Stores from the royal magazine I bring. And their own darts shall pierce the prince and king. He said. And mounting up the lofty stairs. Twelve shields, twelve lances, and twelve helmets bears. All arm, and sudden round the hall appears. A blaze of bucklers, and a wood of spears. The hero stands oppressed with mighty woe. On every side he sees the labor grow. O cursed event! And O unlooked for aid! Melanthius or the women have betrayed. O my dear son! The father with a sigh. Then ceased. The filial virtue made reply. Falsehood is folly, and tis just to own. The fault committed, this was mine alone. My haste neglected yonder door to bar. And hence the villain has supplied their war. Run, good Eumius, then, and, what before? I thoughtless erred in, well secure that door. Learn, if by female fraud this deed were done. Or, as my thought misgives, by Dolius' son. While yet they spoke, in quest of arms again. To the high chamber stole the faithless swain. Not unobserved. Eumius watchful eyed. And thus addressed Ulysses near his side. The miscreant we suspected takes that way. Him, if this arm be powerful, shall I slay. Or drive him hither, to receive the mead. From thy own hand, of this detested deed? Not so, replied Ulysses, leave him there. For us sufficient is another care. Within the structure of this palace wall. To keep enclosed his masters till they fall. Go you, and seize the felon. Backward bind. His arms and legs, and fix a plank behind. On this his body by strong cords extend. And on a column near the roof suspend. So studied tortures his vile days shall end. The ready swains obeyed with joyful haste. Behind the felon unperceived they passed. As round the room in quest of arms he goes. The half-shut door concealed his lurking foes. One hand sustained a helm. And won the shield. Which old Laertes wont in youth to wield. Covered with dust, with dryness chapped and worn. The brass corroded, and the leather torn. Thus laden, o'er the threshold as he stepped. 
fierce on the villain from each side they leaped. Back by the hair the trembling dastard drew. And down reluctant on the pavement threw. Active and pleased the zealous swains fulfill. At every point their master's rigid will. First, fast behind, his hands and feet they bound. Then straightened cords involved his body round. So drawn aloft, athwart the column tied. The howling felon swung from side to side. Eumius scoffing then with keen disdain. There passed thy pleasing night, O gentle swain. On that soft pillow, from that envied height. First mayst thou see the springing dawn of light. So timely rise, when morning streaks the east. To drive thy victims to the suitor's feast. This said, they, left him, tortured as he lay. Secured the door, and hasty strode away. Each, breathing death, resumed his dangerous post. Near great Ulysses, for against an host. When lo! Descending to her hero's aid. Jove's daughter, Pallas, war's triumphant maid. In Mentor's friendly form she joined his side. Ulysses saw, and thus with transport cried. Come, ever welcome, and thy succor lend. O oh, every sacred name in one, my friend. Early we loved, and long our loves have grown. Whatever through life's whole series I have done. Or good, or grateful, now to mind recall. And, aiding this one hour, repay it all. Thus he. But pleasing hopes his bosom warm. Of Pallas latent in the friendly form. The adverse host the phantom warrior eyed. And first, loud threatening, Agilos cried. Mentor, beware, nor let that tongue persuade. Thy frantic arm to lend Ulysses aid. Our force successful shall our threat make good. And with the sire and son commix thy blood. What hopest thou here? Thee first the sword shall slay. Then lop thy whole posterity away. Far hence thy banished consort shall we send. With his thy forfeit lands and treasures blend. Thus, and thus only, shalt thou join thy friend. His barbarous insult even the goddess fires. Who thus the warrior to revenge inspires? Art thou Ulysses? Where then shall we find? The patient body and the constant mind? That courage, once the Trojans daily dread. Known nine long years, and felt by heroes dead. And where that conduct, which revenged the lust. Of Priam's race, and laid proud Troy in dust. If this, when Helen was the cause, were done. What for thy country now, thy queen, thy son? Rise then in combat, at my side attend. Observe what vigor gratitude can lend. And foes how weak, opposed against a friend. She spoke, but willing longer to survey. The sire and son's great axe withheld the day. By farther toils decreed the brave to try. And level poised the wings of victory. Then with a change of form eludes their sight. Perched like a swallow on a rafter's height. And unperceived enjoys the rising fight. Damister's son, bold Agilos, leads. The guilty war, Euronoma succeeds. With these, Pisander, great Polyctor's son. Sage Polybus, and stern Amphimedon. With Demoptolemus, these six survive. The best of all the shafts had left alive. Amidst the carnage, desperate as they stand. Thus Agilos roused the lagging band. The hour has come, when yon fierce man no more. With bleeding princes shall bestrew the floor. Lo! Mentor leaves him with an empty boast. The four remain, but four against an host. Let each at once discharge the deadly dart. One sure of six shall reach Ulysses' heart. The rest must perish, their great leader slain. Thus shall one stroke the glory lost regain. Then all at once their mingled lances threw. And thirsty all of one man's blood they flew. In vain. Minerva turned them with her breath. And scattered short, or wide, the points of death. With deadened sound one on the threshold falls. One strikes the gate, 
one rings against the walls. The storm passed innocent. The godlike man. Now loftier trod, and dreadful thus began. Tis now, brave friends, our turn, at once to throw. So speed them heaven, our javelins at the foe. That impious race to all their past misdeeds. Would add our blood, injustice still proceeds. He spoke, at once their fiery lances flew. Great Demoptolemus Ulysses slew. Uriades received the prince's dart. The goat herds quivered in Pisander's heart. Fierce Elatus by thine, Eumius, falls. Their fall in thunder echoes round the walls. The rest retreat, the victors now advance. Each from the dead resumes his bloody lance. Again the foe discharged the steely shower. Again made frustrate by the virgin power. Some, turned by Pallas, on the threshold fall. Some wound the gate, some ring against the wall. Some weak, or ponderous with the brazen head. Drop harmless on the pavement, sounding dead. Then bold Amphimedon his javelin cast. Thy hand, Telemachus, it lightly raised. And from Tisippus arm the spear Elon said. On good Eumius' shield and shoulder glanced. Not lessened of their force, so light the wound. Each sun along and dropped upon the ground. Fate doomed thee next, Eurydamus, to bear. Thy death ennobled by Ulysses' spear. By the bold son Amphimedon was slain. And Polybus renowned, the faithful swain. Pierced through the breast the rude Tisippus bled. And thus Phileetius gloried o'er the dead. There end thy pompous vaunts and high disdain. O sharp in scandal, voluble and vain! How weak is mortal pride! To heaven alone! The event of actions and our fates are known. Scoffer, behold what gratitude we bear! The victim's heel is answered with this spear. Ulysses brandished high his vengeful steel. And Damastorides that instant fell. Fast by Leocritus expiring lay. The prince's javelin tore its bloody way. Through all his bowels, down he tumbled prone. His battered front and brains besmear the stone. Now Pallas shines confessed. Aloft she spreads. The arm of vengeance o'er their guilty heads. The dreadful aegis blazes in their eye. Amazed they see, they tremble, and they fly. Confused, distracted, through the rooms they fling. Like oxen maddened by the breeze's sting. When sultry days, and long, succeed the gentle spring. Not half so keen fierce vultures of the chase. Stoop from the mountains on the feathered race. When, the wide field extended snares beset. With conscious dread they shun the quivering net. No help, no flight. But wounded every way. Headlong they drop, the fowlers seize their prey. On all sides thus they double wound on wound. In prostrate heaps the wretches beat the ground. Unmanly shrieks precede each dying groan. And a red deluge floats the reeking stone. Leodes first before the victor falls. The wretched augur thus for mercy calls. O gracious here, nor let thy suppliant bleed. Still undishonored, or by word or deed. Thy house, for me remains. By me repressed. Full oft was checked the injustice of the rest. A verse they heard me when I counseled well. Their hearts were hardened, and they justly fell. O spare an augur's consecrated head. Nor add the blameless to the guilty dead. Priest as thou art. For that detested band. Thy lying prophecies deceived the land. Against Ulysses have thy vows been made. For them thy daily orisons were paid. Yet more, e'en to our bed thy pride aspires. One common crime one common fate requires. Thus speaking, from the ground the sword he took. Which Agilo's dying hand forsook. Full through his neck the weighty falchion sped. Along the pavement rolled the muttering head. Phemius alone the hand of vengeance spared. Phemius the sweet, the heaven-instructed bard. Beside the gate the reverend minstrel stands. 
the liar now silent trembling in his hands. Dubious to supplicate the chief, or fly. To Jove's inviolable altar nigh. Where oft Laertes' holy vows had paid. And oft Ulysses' smoking victims laid. His honored harp with care he first set down. Between the laver and the silver throne. Then prostrate stretched before the dreadful man. Persuasive thus, with accent soft began. O king! To mercy be thy soul inclined. And spare the poet's ever gentle kind. A deed like this thy future fame would wrong. For dear to gods and men is sacred song. Self-taught I sing. By heaven, and heaven alone. The genuine seeds of poesy are sown. And, what the gods bestow, the lofty lay. To gods alone and godlike worth we pay. Save then the poet, and thyself reward. Tis thine to merit, mine is to record. That here I sung, was force, and not desire. This hand reluctant touched the warbling wire. And let thy son attest, nor sordid pay. Nor servile flattery, stained the moral lay. The moving words Telemachus attends. His sire approaches, and the bard defends. O oh, mix not, father, with those impious dead. The man divine. Forbear that sacred head. Medan, the herald, too, our arms may spare. Medan, who made my infancy his care. If yet he breathes, permit thy son to give. Thus much to gratitude, and bid him live. Beneath a table, trembling with dismay. Couched close to earth, unhappy Medan lay. Wrapped in a new slain ox's ample hide. Swift at the word he cast his screen aside. Sprung to the prince, embraced his knee with tears. And thus with grateful voice addressed his ears. O prince! O friend! Lo, here thy Medan stands. Ah, stop the hero's unresisted hands. Incensed too justly by that impious brood. Whose guilty glories now are set in blood. To whom Ulysses with a pleasing eye. Be bold, on friendship and my son rely. Live, an example for the world to read. How much more safe the good than evil deed. Thou, with the heaven-taught bard, in peace resort. From blood and carnage to yon open court. Me other work requires. With timorous awe. From the dire scene the exempted to withdraw. Scarce sure of life, look round, and trembling move. To the bright altars of protector Jove. Meanwhile Ulysses searched the dome, to find. If yet there live of all the offending kind. Not one. Complete the bloody tale he found. All steeped in blood, all gasping on the ground. So, when by hollow shores the fisher train. Sweep with their arching nets the roaring main. And scarce the meshy toils the copious draught contain. All naked of their element, and bare. The fishes pant, and gasp in thinner air. Wide o'er the sands are spread the stiffening prey. Till the warm sun exhales their soul away. And now the king commands his son to call. Old Euryclea to the deathful hall. The sun observant not a moment stays. The aged governess with speed obeys. The sounding portals instant they display. The matron moves, the prince directs the way. On heaps of death the stern Ulysses stood. All black with dust, and covered thick with blood. So the grim lion from the slaughter comes. Dreadful he glares, and terribly he foams. His breast with marks of carnage painted o'er. His jaws all dropping with the bull's black gore. Soon as her eyes the welcome object met. The guilty fall in, the mighty deed complete. A scream of joy her feeble voice essayed. The hero checked her, and composedly said. Woman, experienced as thou art, control. Indecent joy, and feast thy secret soul. To insult the dead is cruel and unjust. Fate and their crime have sunk them to the dust. Nor heeded these the censure of mankind. The good and bad were equal in their mind. 
justly the price of worthlessness they paid. And each now wails an unlamented shade. But thou sincere! O Euryclea, say! What maids dishonor us, and what obey? Then she, in these thy kingly walls remain. My son, full fifty of the handmaid train. Taught by my care to cull the fleece or weave. And servitude with pleasing tasks deceive. Of these, twice six pursue their wicked way. Nor me, nor chaste Penelope obey. Nor fits at that Telemachus command. Young as he is, his mother's female band. Hence to the upper chambers let me fly. Where slumbers soft now close the royal eye. There wake her with the news, the matron cried. Not so, Ulysses, more sedate, replied. Bring first the crew who wrought these guilty deeds. In haste the matron parts, the king proceeds. Now to dispose the dead, the care remains. To you, my son, and you, my faithful swains. The offending females to that task we doom. To wash, to scent, and purify the room. These, every table cleansed, and every throne. And all the melancholy labor done. Drive to yon court, without the palace wall. There the revenging sword shall smite them all. So with the suitors let them mix in dust. Stretched in a long oblivion of their lust. He said, the lamentable train appear. Each vents a groan, and drops a tender tear. Each heaved her mournful burden, and beneath. The porch deposed the ghastly heap of death. The chief severe, compelling each to move. Urged the dire task imperious from above. With thirsty sponge they rub the tables o'er. The swains unite their toil, the walls, the floor. Washed with the effusive wave, are purged of gore. Once more the palace set in fair array. To the base court the females take their way. They're compassed close between the dome and wall. Their life's last scene, they trembling wait their fall. Then thus the prince, to these shall we afford. A fate so pure as by the martial sword. To these, the knightly prostitutes to shame. And base revilers of our house and name. Thus speaking, on the circling wall he strung. A ship's tough cable from a column hung. Near the high top he strained it strongly round. Whence no contending foot could reach the ground. Their heads above connected in a row. They beat the air with quivering feet below. Thus on some tree hung struggling in the snare. The doves or thrushes flapped their wings in air. Soon fled the soul impure, and left behind. The empty course to waver with the wind. Then forth they led Melanthius, and began. Their bloody work, they lopped away the man. Morsel for dogs. Then trimmed with brazen shears. The wretch, and shortened of his nose and ears. His hands and feet last felt the cruel steel. He roared, and torments gave his soul to hell. They wash, and to Ulysses take their way. So ends the bloody business of the day. To Euryclea then addressed the king. Bring hither fire, and hither sulphur bring. To purge the palace, then the queen attend. And let her with her matron train descend. The matron train, with all the virgin band. Assemble here, to learn their lord's command. Then Euryclea, joyful I obey. But cast those mean dishonest rags away. Permit me first the royal robes to bring. Ill suits this garb the shoulders of a king. Bring sulphur straight, and fire, the monarch cries. She hears, and at the word obedient flies. With fire and sulphur, cure of noxious fumes. He purged the walls, and blood-polluted rooms. Again the matron springs with eager pace. And spreads her lord's return from place to place. They hear, rush forth, and instant round him stand. A gazing throng, a torch in every hand. They saw, they knew him, and with fond embrace. Each humbly kissed his knee, or hand, or face. He knows them all, in all such truth appears. 
E.N. he indulges the sweet joy of tears. Book 23 Argument Euryclea awakens Penelope with the news of Ulysses' return, and the death of the suitors. Penelope scarcely credits her. But supposes some god has punished them, and descends from her department in doubt. At the first interview of Ulysses and Penelope, she is quite unsatisfied. Minerva restores him to the beauty of his youth. But the queen continues incredulous, till by some circumstances she is convinced, and falls into all the transports of passion and tenderness. They recount to each other all that has passed during their long separation. The next morning Ulysses, arming himself and his friends, goes from the city to visit his father. Then to the queen, as in repose she lay. The nurse with eager rapture speeds her way. The transports of her faithful heart supply. A sudden youth, and give her wings to fly. And sleeps my child. The reverend matron cries. Ulysses lives. Arise, my child, arise. At length appears the long-expected hour. Ulysses comes. The suitors are no more. No more they view the golden light of day. Arise, and bless thee with the glad survey. Touched at her words, the mournful queen rejoined. Ah! Whither wanders thy distempered mind? The righteous powers, who tread the starry skies. The weak enlighten, and confound the wise. And human thought, with unresisted sway. Depress or raise, enlarge or take away. Truth, by their high decree, thy voice forsakes. And folly with the tongue of wisdom speaks. Unkind, the fond illusion to impose. Was it to flatter or deride my woes? Never did I sleep so sweet in joy. Since my dear Lord left Ithaca for Troy. Why must I wake to grieve, and curse thy shore? O Troy, may never tongue pronounce thee more. Be gone. Another might have felt our rage. But age is sacred, and we spare thy age. To whom with warmth, my soul a lie disdains. Ulysses lives, thy own Ulysses reigns. That stranger, patient of the suitor's wrongs. And the rude license of ungoverned tongues. He, he is thine. Thy son his latent guest. Long knew, but locked the secret in his breast. With well-concerted art to end his woes. And burst at once in vengeance on the foes. While yet she spoke, the queen in transport sprung. Swift from the couch, and round the matron hung. Fast from her eye descends the rolling tear. Say, once more say, is my Ulysses here? How could that numerous and outrageous band? By one be slain, though by a hero's hand. I saw it not, she cries, but heard alone. When death was busy, a loud dying groan. The damsel train turned pale at every wound. Immured we sate, and catched each passing sound. When death had seized her prey, thy son attends. And at his nod the damsel train descends. There terrible in arms Ulysses stood. And the dead suitors almost swam in blood. Thy heart had leaped the hero to survey. Stern as the surly lion o'er his prey. Glorious in gore, now with sulfurious fire. The dome he purges. Now the flame aspires. Heaped lie the dead without the palace walls. Haste, daughter, haste, thy own Ulysses calls. Thy every wish the bounteous gods bestow. Enjoy the present good, and former woe. Ulysses lives, his vanquished foes to see. He lives to thy Telemachus and thee. Ah, no. With sighs Penelope rejoined. Excess of joy disturbs thy wandering mind. How blessed this happy hour, should he appear. Dear to us all, to me supremely dear. Ah, no. Some god the suitor's death decreed. Some god descends, and by his hand they bleed. Blind. To contemn the stranger's righteous cause. And violate all hospitable laws. The good they hated, and the powers defied. But heaven is just, and by a god they died. 
For never must Ulysses view this shore. Never. The loved Ulysses is no more. What words, the matron cries, have reached my ears. Doubt we his presence, when he now appears. Then hear conviction, ere the fatal day. That forced Ulysses o'er the watery way. A boar, fierce rushing in the sylvan war. Plowed half his thigh, I saw, I saw the scar. And wild with transport had revealed the wound. But ere I spoke, he rose, and checked the sound. Then, daughter, haste away. And if a lie. Flow from this tongue, then let thy servant die. To whom with dubious joy the queen replies. Wise is thy soul, but errors seize the wise. The works of gods what mortal can survey. Who knows their motives, who shall trace their way. But learn we instant how the suitors trod. The paths of death, by man, or by a god. Thus speaks the queen, and no reply attends. But with alternate joy and fear descends. At every step debates her lord to prove. Or, rushing to his arms, confess her love. Then gliding through the marble valves, in state. Opposed, before the shining sire she sate. The monarch, by a column high enthroned. His eye withdrew, and fixed it on the ground. Curious to hear his queen the silence break. Amazed she sate, and impotent to speak. O'er all the man her eyes she rolls in vain. Now hopes, now fears, now knows, then doubts again. At length Telemachus, oh, who can find? A woman like Penelope unkind. Why thus in silence? Why with winning charms? Thus slow to fly with rapture to his arms. Stubborn the breast that with no transport glows. When twice ten years are past of mighty woes. To softness lost, to spousal love unknown. The gods have formed that rigid heart of stone. O oh my Telemachus! The queen rejoined. Distracting fears confound my laboring mind. Powerless to speak. I scarce uplift my eyes. Nor dare to question, doubts on doubts arise. O oh, deign he, if Ulysses, to remove. These boding thoughts, and what he is, to prove. Pleased with her virtuous fears, the king replies. Indulge, my son, the cautions of the wise. Time shall the truth to sure remembrance bring. This garb of poverty belies the king. No more. This day our deepest care requires. Cautious to act what thought mature inspires. If one man's blood, though mean, disdain our hands. The homicide retreats to foreign lands. By us, in heaps the illustrious peerage falls. The important deed our whole attention calls. Be that thy care, Telemachus replies. The world conspires to speak Ulysses wise. For wisdom all is thine. Lo, I obey. And dauntless follow where you led the way. Nor shalt thou in the day of danger find. Thy coward son degenerate lag behind. Then instant to the bath, the monarch cries. Bid the gay youth and sprightly virgins rise. Thence all descend in pomp and proud array. And bid the dome resound the mirthful lay. While the sweet lyrist airs of rapture sings. And forms the dance responsive to the strings. That hence the eluded passengers may say. Lo! The queen weds. We hear the spousal lay. The suitor's death, unknown, till we remove. Far from the court, an act inspired by Jove. Thus spoke the king, the observant train obey. At once they bathe, and dress in proud array. The lyrist strikes the string. Gay youths advance. And fair's own damsels form the sprightly dance. The voice, attuned to instrumental sounds. Ascends the roof, the vaulted roof rebounds. Not unobserved, the Greeks eluded say. Lo! The queen weds, we hear the spousal lay. Inconstant. To admit the bridal hour. Thus they, but nobly chaste she weds no more. 
Meanwhile the wearied king the bath ascends. With faithful cares your enemy attends. O'er every limb a shower of fragrance sheds. Then, dressed in pomp, magnificent he treads. The warrior goddess gives his frame to shine. With majesty enlarged, and grace divine. Back from his brows in wavy ringlets fly. His thick large locks of hyacinthine dye. As by some artist to whom Vulcan gives. His heavenly skill, a breathing image lives. By palace taught, he frames the wondrous mold. And the pale silver glows with fusel gold. So Pallas his heroic form improves. With bloom divine, and like a god he moves. More high he treads, and issuing forth in state. Radiant before his gazing consort sate. And, O oh my queen! He cries, What power above! Has steeled that heart, averse to spousal love? Canst thou, Penelope, when heaven restores? Thy lost Ulysses to his native shores. Canst thou, O cruel, unconcerned survey? Thy lost Ulysses, on this signal day. Haste, Euryclea, and dispatchful spread. For me, and me alone, the imperial bed. My weary nature craves the balm of rest. But heaven with adamant has armed her breast. Ah no! She cries, a tender heart I bear. A foe to pride, no adamant is there. And now, e'en now it melts. For sure I see. Once more Ulysses my beloved in thee. Fixed in my soul, as when he sailed to Troy. His image dwells, then haste the bed of joy. Haste, from the bridal bower the bed translate. Franned by his hand, and be it dressed in state. Thus speaks the queen, still dubious, with disguise. Touched at her words, the king with warmth replies. Alas for this! What mortal strength can move? The enormous burden, who but heaven above? It mocks the weak attempts of human hands. But the whole earth must move if heaven commands. Then hear sure evidence, while we display. Words sealed with sacred truth, and truth obey. This hand the wonder framed, an olive spread. Full in the court its ever verdant head. Vast as some mighty column's bulk, on high. The huge trunk rose, and heaved into the sky. Around the tree I raised a nuptial bower. And roofed defensive of the storm and shower. The spacious valve, with art inwrought conjoins. And the fair dome with polished marble shines. I lopped the branchy head, aloft in twain. Severed the bowl, and smoothed the shining grain. Then posts, capacious of the frame, I raise. And bore it, regular, from space to space. Athwart the frame, at equal distance lie. Thongs of tough hides, that boast a purple dye. Then polishing the whole, the finished mold. With silver shone, with elephant, and gold. But if o'erturned by rude, ungoverned hands. Or still inviolate the olive stands. Tis thine, O queen, to say, and now impart. If fears remain, or doubts distract thy heart. While yet he speaks, her powers of life decay. She sickens, trembles, falls, and faints away. At length recovering, to his arms she flew. And strained him close, as to his breast she grew. The tears poured down amain, and, oh, she cries. Let not against thy spouse thine anger rise. O oh, versed in every turn of human art. Forgive the weakness of a woman's heart. The righteous powers, that mortal lot dispose. Decree us to sustain a length of woes. And from the flower of life the bliss deny. To bloom together, fade away, and die. O oh, let me, let me not thine anger move. That I forbore, thus, thus to speak my love. Thus in fond kisses, while the transport warms. Pour out my soul and die within thine arms. I dreaded fraud. Men, faithless men, betray. Our easy faith, and make our sex their prey. Against the fondness of my heart I strove. 
Twas caution, O my Lord! Not want of love. Like me had Helen feared, with wanton charms. Ere the fair mischief set two worlds in arms. Ere Greece rose dreadful in the avenging day. Thus had she feared, she had not gone astray. But heaven, averse to Greece, in wrath decreed. That she should wander, and that Greece should bleed. Blind to the ills that from injustice flow. She colored all our wretched lives with woe. But why these sorrows when my Lord arrives? I yield, I yield. My own Ulysses lives. The secrets of the bridal bed are known. To thee, to me, to Actoris alone. My father's present in the spousal hour. The sole attendant on our genial bower. Since what know I have seen thy tongue revealed. Hard and distrustful as I am, I yield. Touched to the soul, the king with rapture hears. Hangs round her neck, and speaks his joy in tears. As to the shipwrecked mariner, the shores. Delightful rise, when angry Neptune roars. Then, when the surge in thunder mounts the sky. Engulfed in crowds at once the sailors die. If one, more happy, while the tempest raves. Outlives the tumult of conflicting waves. All pale, with ooze deformed, he views the strand. And plunging forth with transport grasps the land. The ravished queen with equal rapture glows. Clasps her loved lord, and to his bosom grows. Nor had they ended till the morning ray. But Pallas backward held the rising day. The wheels of night retarding, to detain. The gay aurora in the wavy main. Whose flaming steeds, emerging through the night. Beam o'er the eastern hills with streaming light. At length Ulysses with a sigh replies. Yet fate, yet cruel fate repose denies. A labor long, and hard, remains behind. By heaven above, by hell beneath enjoined. For to Tiresias through the eternal gates. Of hell I trod, to learn my future fates. But end we here, the night demands repose. Be decked the couch. And peace awhile, my woes. To whom the queen, thy word we shall obey. And deck the couch, far hence be woes away. Since the just gods, who tread the starry plains. Restore thee safe, since my Ulysses reigns. But what those perils heaven decrees, impart. Knowledge may grieve, but fear distracts the heart. To this the king, ah, why must I disclose? A dreadful story of approaching woes. Why in this hour of transport wound thy ears? When thou must learn what I must speak with tears. Heaven, by the Theban ghost, thy spouse decrees. Torn from thy arms, to sail a length of seas. From realm to realm, a nation to explore. Who ne'er knew salt, or heard the billows roar. Nor saw gay vessel storm the surgy plain. A painted wonder, flying on the main. An or my hand must bear. A shepherd eyes. The unknown instrument with strange surprise. And calls a corn van, this upon the plain. I fix, and hail the monarch of the main. Then bathe his altars with the mingled gore. A victim's vowed, a ram, a bull, a boar. Then swift resailing to my native shores. Do victims slay to all the ethereal powers. Then heaven decrees, in peace to end my days. And steal myself from life by slow decays. Unknown to pain, in age resign my breath. When late stern Neptune points the shaft of death. To the dark grave retiring as to rest. My people blessing, by my people blessed. Such future scenes the all-righteous powers display. By their dread seer, and such my future day. To whom thus firm of soul, if ripe for death. And full of days, thou gently yield thy breath. While heaven a kind release from ills foreshows. Triumph thou happy victor of thy woes. But Euryclea, with dispatchful care. And sage Euronymy, the couch prepare. Instant they bid the blazing torch display. Around the dome an artificial day. 
then to repose her steps the matron bends. And to the queen Euronymy descends. A torch she bears, to light with guiding fires. The royal pair. She guides them, and retires. The instant his fair spouse Ulysses led. To the chaste love rites of the nuptial bed. And now the blooming youths and sprightly fair. Cease the gay dance, and to their rest repair. But in discourse the king in consort lay. While the soft hours stole unperceived away. Intent he hears Penelope disclose. A mournful story of domestic woes. His servants' insults, his invaded bed. How his whole flocks and herds exhausted bled. His generous wines dishonored shed in vain. And the wild riots of the suitor train. The king alternate a dire tale relates. Of wars, of triumphs, and disastrous fates. All he unfolds, his listening spouse turns pale. With pleasing horror at the dreadful tale. Sleepless devours each word. And hears how slain. Sycons on Sycons swell the ensanguined plain. How to the land of Lot unblessed he sails. And images the rills and flowery valleys. How dashed like dogs, his friends the Cyclops tore. Not unrevenged, and quaffed the spouting gore. How the loud storms in prison bound, he sails. From friendly Aeolus with prosperous gales. Yet fate withstands. A sudden tempest roars. And whirls him groaning from his native shores. How on the barbarous Lestragonian coast. By savage hands his fleet and friends lie lost. How scarce himself survived, he paints the bower. The spells of Circe, and her magic power. His dreadful journey to the realms beneath. To seek Tiresias in the valleys of death. How in the doleful mansions lie surveyed. His royal mother, pale Anticles shade. And friends in battle slain, heroic ghosts. Then how, unharmed, he passed the siren coasts. The justling rocks where fierce Charybdis raves. And howling Scylla whirls her thunderous waves. The cave of death. How his companions slay. The oxen sacred to the god of day. Till Jove in wrath the rattling tempest guides. And whelms the offenders in the roaring tides. How struggling through the surge he reached the shores. Of Pharaoh Gigia and Calypso's bowers. Where the gay blooming nymph constrained his stay. With sweet, reluctant, amorous delay. And promised, vainly promised, to bestow. Immortal life, exempt from age and woe. How saved from storms Phaeacia's coast he trod. By great Alcinous honored as a god. Who gave him last his country to behold. With change of raiment, brass. And heaps of gold. He ended, sinking into sleep, and shares. A sweet forgetfulness of all his cares. Soon as soft slumber eased the toils of day. Minerva rushes through the aerial way. And bids Aurora with her golden wheels. Flame from the ocean o'er the eastern hills. Uprose Ulysses from the genial bed. And thus with thought mature the monarch said. My queen, my consort. Through a length of years. We drank the cup of sorrow mixed with tears. Thou, for thy lord. While me the immortal powers. Detained reluctant from my native shores. Now, blessed again by heaven, the queen display. And rule our palace with an equal sway. Be it my care, by loans, or martial toils. To throng my empty folds with gifts or spoils. But now I haste to bless Laertes' eyes. With sight of his Ulysses ere he dies. The good old man, to wasting woes a prey. Weeps a sad life in solitude away. But here, though wise. This morning shall unfold. The deathful scene, on heroes heroes rolled. Thou with thy maids within the palace stay. From all the scene of tumult far away. He spoke, and sheathed in arms incessant flies. To wake his son, and bid his friends arise. To arms, aloud he cries. His friends obey. 
with glittering arms their manly limbs array. And past the city gate, Ulysses leads the way. Now flames the rosy dawn, but palace shrouds. The latent warriors in a veil of clouds. Book 24. Argument. The souls of the suitors are conducted by Mercury to the infernal shades. Ulysses in the country goes to the retirement of his father, Laertes, he finds him busied in his garden all alone, the manner of his discovery to him is beautifully described. They return together to his lodge, and the king is acknowledged by Dolius and the servants. The Ithacensians, led by Eupiths, the father of Antinous, rise against Ulysses, who gives them battle in which Eupiths is killed by Laertes, and the goddess Pallas makes a lasting peace between Ulysses and his subjects. Which concludes the Odyssey. Selenius now to Pluto's dreary reign. Conveys the dead, a lamentable train. The golden wand, that causes sleep to fly. Or in soft slumber seals the wakeful eye. That drives the ghosts to realms of night or day. Points out the long uncomfortable way. Trembling the spectres glide, and plaintive vent. Thin, hollow screams, along the deep descent. As in the cavern of some rift den. Where flock nocturnal bats, and birds obscene. Clustered they hang, till at some sudden shock. They move, and murmurs run through all the rock. So cowering fled the sable heaps of ghosts. And such a scream filled all the dismal coasts. And now they reached the earth's remotest ends. And now the gates where evening soul descends. And look as rock, and ocean's utmost streams. And now pervade the dusky land of dreams. And rest at last. Where souls unbodied dwell. In ever-flowing meads of asphodel. The empty forms of men inhabit there. Impassive semblance, images of air. Not else are all that shined on earth before. Ajax and great Achilles are no more. Yet still a master ghost, the rest he awed. The rest adored him, towering as he trod. Still at his side is Nestor's son surveyed. And loved Patroclus still attends his shade. Knew as they were to that infernal shore. The suitors stopped, and gazed the hero o'er. When, moving slow, the regal form they viewed. Of great atrides, him in pomp pursued. And solemn sadness through the gloom of hell. The train of those who by Aegisthus fell. O mighty chief! Pelides thus began. Honored by Jove above the lot of man. King of a hundred kings. To whom resigned. The strongest, bravest, greatest of mankind. Comest thou the first, to view this dreary state. And was the noblest, the first mark of fate. Condemned to pay the great arrear so soon. The lot, which all lament, and none can shun. Oh! Better hadst thou sunk in Trojan ground. With all thy full-blown honours covered round. Then grateful Greece with streaming eyes might raise. Historic marbles to record thy praise. Thy praise eternal on the faithful stone. Had with transmissive glories graced thy son. But heavier fates were destined to attend. What man is happy, till he knows his end? O son of Peleus! Greater than mankind! Thus Agamemnon's kingly shade rejoined. Thrice happy thou, to press the martial plain. Midst heaps of heroes in thy quarrel slain. In clouds of smoke raised by the noble fray. Great and terrific Ian in death you lay. And deluges of blood flowed round you every way. Nor ceased the strife till Jove himself opposed. And all in tempests the dire evening closed. Then to the fleet we bore thy honoured load. And decent on the funeral bed bestowed. Then unguent sweet and tepid streams we shed. Tears flowed from every eye, and o'er the dead. Each clipped the curling honours of his head. Struck at the news, thy azure mother came. The sea-green sisters waited on the dame. A voice of loud lament through all the main. Was heard. And terror seized the Grecian train. Back to their ships the fright host had fled. But Nestor spoke, 
they listened and obeyed. From old experience Nestor's counsel springs. And long vicissitudes of human things. Forbear your flight, fair Thetis from the main. To mourn Achilles leads her azure train. Around thee stand the daughters of the deep. Robe thee in heavenly vests, and round thee weep. Round thee, the muses, with alternate strain. In ever consecrating verse, complain. Each warlike Greek the moving music hears. And iron hearted heroes melt in tears. Till seventeen nights and seventeen days returned. All that was mortal or immortal mourned. To flames we gave thee, the succeeding day. And fatted sheep and sable oxen slay. With oils and honey blazed the augmented fires. And, like a god adorned, thy earthly part expires. Unnumbered warriors round the burning pile. Urge the fleet coursers or the racers toil. Thick clouds of dust o'er all the circle rise. And the mixed clamor thunders in the skies. Soon as absorbed in all-embracing flame. Sunk what was mortal of thy mighty name. We then collect thy snowy bones, and place. With wines and unguents in a golden vase. The vase to Thetis Bacchus gave of old. And Vulcan's art enriched the sculptured gold. There, we thy relics, great Achilles. Blend. With dear Patroclus, thy departed friend. In the same urn a separate space contains. Thy next beloved, Antilochus remains. Now all the sons of warlike Greece surround. Thy destined tomb and cast a mighty mound. High on the shore the growing hill we raise. That wide the extended Hellespont surveys. Where all, from age to age, who pass the coast. May point Achilles' tomb, and hail the mighty ghost. Thetis herself to all our peers proclaims. Heroic prizes and exequial games. The gods assented. And around thee lay. Rich spoils and gifts that blazed against the day. Oft have I seen with solemn funeral games. Heroes and kings committed to the flames. But strength of youth, or valor of the brave. With nobler contest ne'er renowned a grave. Such were the games by azure Thetis given. And such thy honors, O beloved of heaven. Dear to mankind thy fame survives, nor fades. Its bloom eternal in the Stygian shades. But what to me avail my honors gone? Successful toils, and battles bravely won. Doomed by stern Jove at home to end my life. By cursed Aegisthus, and a faithless wife. Thus they, while Hermes o'er the dreary plain. Led the sad numbers by Ulysses slain. On each majestic form they cast a view. And Timorous passed, and awfully withdrew. But Agamemnon, through the gloomy shade. His ancient host Amphimedon surveyed. Son of Melanthius. He began, O oh say. What cause compelled so many, and so gay? To tread the downward, melancholy way. Say, could one city yield a troop so fair? Were all these partners of one native air? Or did the rage of stormy Neptune sweep? Your lives at once, and whelmed beneath the deep. Did nightly thieves, or pirates cruel bands? Drench with your blood your pillaged country's sands? Or well defending some beleaguered wall? Say, for the public did ye greatly fall? Inform thy guest, for such I was of yore. When our triumphant navies touched your shore. Forced a long month the wintry seas to bear. To move the great Ulysses to the war. O king of men! I faithful shall relate. Replied Amphimedon, our hapless fate. Ulysses absent, our ambitious aim. With rival loves pursued his royal dame. Her coy reserve, and prudence mixed with pride. Our common suit nor granted, nor denied. But close with inward hate our deaths designed. Versed in all arts of wily womankind. Her hand, laborious, in delusion spread. A spacious loom, and mixed the various thread. Ye peers, she cried, who press to gain my heart. Where dead Ulysses claims no more a part. 
yet a short space your rival suit suspend. Till this funereal web my labors end. Cease, till to good Laertes I bequeath. A task of grief. His ornaments of death. Lest when the fates his royal ashes claim. The Grecian matrons taint my spotless fame. Should he, long honored with supreme command. Want the last duties of a daughter's hand. The fiction pleased, our generous train complies. Nor fraud mistrusts in virtue's fair disguise. The work she plied, but studious of delay. Each following night reversed the toils of day. Unheard, unseen, three years her arts prevail. The fourth, her maid revealed the amazing tale. And showed as unperceived we took our stand. The backward labors of her faithless hand. Forced she completes it. And before us lay. The mingled web, whose gold and silver ray. Displayed the radiance of the night and day. Just as she finished her illustrious toil. Ill fortune led Ulysses to our isle. Far in a lonely nook, beside the sea. At an old swineherd's rural lodge he lay. Thither his son from sandy pile repairs. And speedy lands, and secretly confers. They plan our future ruin, and resort. Confederate to the city and the court. First came the son, the father next succeeds. Clad like a beggar, whom Eumius leads. Propped on a staff, deformed with age and care. And hung with rags that fluttered in the air. Who could Ulysses in that form behold? Scorned by the young, forgotten by the old. Ill used by all. To every wrong resigned. Patient he suffered with a constant mind. But when, arising in his wrath to obey. The will of Jove, he gave the vengeance way. The scattered arms that hung around the dome. Careful he treasured in a private room. Then to her suitors bade his queen propose. The archer's strife, the source of future woes. An omen of our death. In vain we drew. The twanging string, and tried the stubborn you. To none it yields but great Ulysses' hands. In vain we threat. Telemachus commands. The bow he snatched, and in an instant bent. Through every ring the victor arrow went. Fierce on the threshold then in arms he stood. Poured forth the darts that thirsted for our blood. And frowned before us, dreadful as a god. First bleeds Antinous, thick the shafts resound. And heaps on heaps the wretches strew the ground. This way, and that, we turn, we fly, we fall. Some god assisted, and unmanned us all. Ignoble cries precede the dying groans. And battered brains and blood besmear the stones. Thus, great Atrides, thus Ulysses drove. The shades thou sayest from yon fair realms above. Our mangled bodies now deformed with gore. Cold and neglected, spread the marble floor. No friend to bathe our wounds, or tears to shed. O'er the pale course. The honors of the dead. O blessed Ulysses. Thus the king expressed. His sudden rapture, in thy consort blessed. Not more thy wisdom than her virtue shined. Not more thy patience than her constant mind. Icarius' daughter, glory of the past. And model to the future age, shall last. The gods, to honor her fair fame, shall rise. Their great reward, a poet in her praise. Not such, O Tinderus. Thy daughter's deed. By whose dire hand her king and husband bled. Her shall the muse to infamy prolong. Example dread, and theme of tragic song. The general sex shall suffer in her shame. And e'en the best that bears a woman's name. Thus in the regions of eternal shade. Conferred the mournful phantoms of the dead. While from the town, Ulysses and his band. Passed to Laertes' cultivated land. The ground himself had purchased with his pain. And labor made the rugged soil a plain. There stood his mansion of the rural sort. With useful buildings round the lowly court. Where the few servants that divide his care. 
took their laborious rest, and homely fare. And one Sicilian matron, old and sage. With constant duty tends his drooping age. Here now arriving, to his rustic band. And martial son, Ulysses gave command. Enter the house, and of the bristly swine. Select the largest of the powers divine. Alone, and unattended, let me try. If yet I share the old man's memory. If those dim eyes can yet Ulysses know. Their light and dearest object long ago. Now changed with time, with absence, and with woe. Then to his train he gives his spear and shield. The house they enter, and he seeks the field. Through rows of shade, with various fruitage crowned. And labored scenes of richest verdure round. Nor aged Dolius. Nor his sons, were there. Nor servants, absent on another care. To search the woods for sets of flowery thorn. Their orchard bounds to strengthen and adorn. But all alone the hoary king he found. His habit coarse, but warmly wrapped around. His head, that bowed with many a pensive care. Fenced with a double cap of goatskin hair. His buskins old, in former service torn. But swell repaired, and gloves against the thorn. In this array the kingly gardener stood. And cleared a plant, encumbered with its wood. Beneath a neighboring tree, the chief divine. Gazed o'er his sire, retracing every line. The ruins of himself, now worn away. With age, yet still majestic in decay. Sudden his eyes released their watery store. The much enduring man could bear no more. Doubtful he stood, if instant to embrace. His aged limbs, to kiss his reverend face. With eager transport to disclose the whole. And pour at once the torrent of his soul. Not so, his judgment takes the winding way. Of question distant, and of soft essay. More gentle methods on weak age employs. And moves the sorrows to enhance the joys. Then, to his sire with beating heart he moves. And with a tender pleasantry reproves. Who digging round the plant still hangs his bead. Nor aught remits the work, while thus he said. Great is thy skill, O father. Great thy toil. Thy careful hand is stamped on all the soil. Thy squadron vineyards well thy art declare. The olive green, blue fig, and pendant pear. And not one empty spot escapes thy care. On every plant and tree thy cares are shown. Nothing neglected, but thyself alone. Forgive me, father, if this fault I blame. Age so advanced, may some indulgence claim. Not for thy sloth, I deem thy lord unkind. Nor speaks thy form a mean or servile mind. I read a monarch in that princely air. The same thy aspect, if the same thy care. Soft sleep, fair garments, and the joys of wine. These are the rights of age, and should be thine. Who then thy master, say? And who's the land? So dressed and managed by thy skillful hand. But chief, O oh tell me. What I question most. Is this the far-famed Ithascension coast? For so reported the first man I viewed. Some surly islander, of manners rude. Nor farther conference vouchsafed to stay. Heedless he whistled, and pursued his way. But thou whom years have taught to understand. Humanely hear, and answer my demand. A friend I seek, a wise one and a brave. Say, lives he yet, or moulders in the grave? Time was, my fortunes then were at the best. When at my house I lodged this foreign guest. He said, from Ithaca's fair isle he came. And old Laertes was his father's name. To him, whatever to a guest is owed. I paid, and hospitable gifts bestowed. To him seven talents of pure or I told. Twelve cloaks, twelve vests, twelve tunics stiff with gold. A bowl, that rich with polished silver flames. And skilled in female works, for lovely dames. At this the father, with a father's fears. His venerable eyes bedimmed with tears. 
This is the land, but ah! Thy gifts are lost. For godless men, and rude possess the coast. Sunk is the glory of this once famed shore. Thy ancient friend, O stranger, is no more. Full recompense thy bounty else had borne. For every good man yields a just return. So civil rights demand, and who begins? The track of friendship, not pursuing, sins. But tell me, stranger, be the truth confessed. What years have circled since thou sawst that guest? That hapless guest, alas! Forever gone! Wretch that he was! And that I am! My son! If ever man to misery was born! Twas his to suffer, and tis mine to mourn! Far from his friends, and from his native reign! He lies a prey to monsters of the main! Or savage beasts his mangled relics tear! Or screaming vultures scatter through the air. Nor could his mother funeral unguents shed. Nor wailed his father o'er the untimely dead. Nor his sad consort, on the mournful bier. Sealed his cold eyes, or dropped a tender tear. But, tell me who thou art. And what thy race. Thy town, thy parents, and thy native place. Or, if a merchant in pursuit of gain. What port received thy vessel from the main? Or comest thou single, or attend thy train? Then thus the sun, from Ali Ba I came. My palace there. Eperidus my name. Not vulgar born, from Aphidus, the king. Of Polyphemon's royal line, I spring. Some adverse demon from Sicania bore. Our wandering course, and drove us on your shore. Far from the town, an unfrequented bay. Relieved our wearied vessel from the sea. Five years have circled since these eyes pursued. Ulysses parting through the sable flood. Prosperous he sailed, with dexter auguries. And all the winged good omens of the skies. Well hoped we then to meet on this fair shore. Whom heaven, alas! Decreed to meet no more. Quick through the father's heart these accents ran. Grief seized at once, and wrapped up all the man. Deep from his soul he sight, and sorrowing spread. A cloud of ashes on his hoary head. Trembling with agonies of strong delight. Stood the great son, heart wounded with the sight. He ran, he seized him with a strict embrace. With thousand kisses wandered o'er his face. I, I am he, O father. Rise. Behold. Thy son, with twenty winters now grown old. Thy son, so long desired, so long detained. Restored, and breathing in his native land. These floods of sorrow, O my sire, restrain. The vengeance is complete. The suitor train. Stretched in our palace, by these hands lie slain. Amazed, Laertes, give some certain sign. If such thou art, to manifest thee mine. Lo hear the wound, he cries, received of yore. The scar indented by the tusky boar. When, by thyself, and by antically ascent. To old Autolycus realms I went. Yet by another sign thy offspring know. The several trees you gave me long ago. While yet a child, these fields I loved to trace and trod thy footsteps with unequal pace. To every plant in order as we came. Well pleased, you told its nature and its name. Whatever my childish fancy asked, bestowed. Twelve pear trees, bowing with their pendant load. And ten, that red with blushing apples glowed. Full fifty purple figs, and many a row. Of various vines that then began to blow. A future vintage. When the hours produce their latent buds, and soul exalts the juice. Smit with the signs which all his doubts explain. His heart within him melts, his knees sustain. Their feeble weight no more, his arms alone. Support him, round the loved Ulysses' throne. He faints, he sinks, with mighty joys oppressed. Ulysses clasps him to his eager breast. Soon as returning life regains its seat. 
and his breath lengthens, and his pulses beat. Yes, I believe, he cries, Almighty Jove. Heaven rules us yet, and gods there are above. Tis so, the suitors for their wrongs have paid. But what shall guard us, if the town invade? If, while the news through every city flies, all Ithaca and Cephalene arise, to this Ulysses, as the gods shall please. Be all the rest, and set thy soul at ease. Haste to the cottage by this orchard side. And take the banquet which our cares provide. There wait thy faithful band of rural friends. And there the young Telemachus attends. Thus, having said, they traced the garden o'er. And stooping entered at the lowly door. The swains and young Telemachus they found. The victim portioned and the goblet crowned. The hoary king, his old Sicilian maid. Perfumed and washed, and gorgeously arrayed. Pallas attending gives his frame to shine. With awful port, and majesty divine. His gazing son admires the godlike grace. And air celestial dawning o'er his face. What God, he cried, my father's form improves. How high he treads and how enlarged he moves. Oh! Would to all the deathless powers on high. Pallas and Jove, and him who gilds the sky. Replied the king elated with his praise. My strength were still, as once in better days. When the bold Cephalans the leaguer formed. And proud Nericus trembled as I stormed. Such were I now, not absent from your deed. When the last sun beheld the suitors bleed. This arm had aided yours, this hand bestrown. Our shores with death, and pushed the slaughter on. Nor had the sire been separate from the sun. They communed thus, while homeward bent their way. The swains, fatigued with labors of the day. Dolius, the first, the venerable man. And next his sons, a long succeeding train. For due refection to the bower they came. Called by the careful old Sicilian dame. Who nursed the children, and now tends the sire. They see their lord, they gaze, and they admire. On chairs and beds in order seated round. They share the gladsome board, the roofs resound. While thus Ulysses to his ancient friend. Forbear your wonder, and the feast attend. The rites have waited long. The chief commands. Their love in vain, old Dolius spreads his hands. Springs to his master with a warm embrace and fastens kisses on his hands and face. Then thus broke out, O long, O daily mourned. Beyond our hopes, and to our wish returned. Conducted sure by heaven. For heaven alone. Could work this wonder, welcome to thy own. And joys and happiness attend thy throne. Who knows thy blessed, thy wished return. O say. To the chaste queen shall we the news convey. Or hears she, and with blessings loads the day. Dismiss that care, for to the royal bride. Already is it known, the king replied. And straight resumed his seat. While round him bows. Each faithful youth, and breathes out ardent vows. Then all beneath their father take their place. Ranked by their ages, and the banquet grace. Now flying fame the swift report had spread. Through all the city, of the suitors dead. In throngs they rise, and to the palace crowd. Their sighs were many and the tumult loud. Weeping they bear the mangled heaps of slain. Inhume the natives in their native plain. The rest in ships are wafted o'er the main. Then sad in council all the seniors sate. Frequent and full, assembled to debate. Amid the circle first Eupiths rose. Big was his eye with tears, his heart with woes. The bold Antinous was his age's pride. The first who by Ulysses' arrow died. Down his wan cheek the trickling torrent ran. As mixing words with sighs he thus began. Great deeds, O oh friends! This wondrous man has wrought. And mighty blessings to his country brought. With ships he parted, and a numerous train. Those, 
and their ships, he buried in the main. Now he returns, and first essays his hand. In the best blood of all his native land. Haste, then, and ere to neighboring pile he flies. Or sacred Ellis, to procure supplies. Arise, or ye forever fall, arise. Shame to this age, and all that shall succeed. If unrevenged your sons and brothers bleed. Prove that we live, by vengeance on his head. Or sink at once forgotten with the dead. Here ceased he, but indignant tears let fall. Spoke when he ceased, dumb sorrow touched them all. When from the palace to the wondering throng. Sage Medan came, and Phemius came along. Restless and early sleep soft bands they broke. And Medan first the assembled chiefs bespoke. Hear me, ye peers and elders of the land. Who deem this act the work of mortal hand? As o'er the heaps of death Ulysses strode. These eyes, these eyes beheld a present God. Who now before him, now beside him stood. Fought as he fought, and marked his way with blood. In vain old mentors form the God belied. Twas heaven that struck, and heaven was on his side. A sudden horror all the assembly shook. When slowly rising, Halitherses spoke. Reverend and wise, whose comprehensive view. At once the present and the future knew. Me too, ye fathers, hear. From you proceed. The ills ye mourn. Your own the guilty deed. Ye gave your sons, your lawless sons, the rain. Oft warned by mentor and myself in vain. An absent hero's bed they sought to soil. An absent hero's wealth they made their spoil. Immoderate riot, and intemperate lust. The offense was great, the punishment was just. Weigh then my counsels in an equal scale. Nor rush to ruin. Justice will prevail. His moderate words some better minds persuade. They part, and join him, but the number stayed. They storm, they shout, with hasty frenzy fired. And second all Yupith's rage inspired. They case their limbs in brass, to arms they run. The broad effulgence blazes in the sun. Before the city, and in ample plain. They meet, Yupith's heads the frantic train. Fears for his son, he breathes his threats in air. Fate bears them not, and death attends him there. This passed on earth, while in the realms above. Minerva thus to cloud-compelling Jove. May I presume to search thy secret soul. O power supreme, O ruler of the whole. Say, hast thou doomed to this divided state? Or peaceful amity or stern debate? Declare thy purpose, for thy will is fate. Is not thy thought my own? The god replies. Who rolls the thunder o'er the vaulted sky's winky face? Hath not long since thy knowing soul decreed. The chief's return should make the guilty bleed. Tis done, and at thy will the fate succeed. Yet hear the issue, since Ulysses' hand. Has slain the suitors, heaven shall bless the land. None now the kindred of the unjust shall own. Forgot the slaughtered brother and the son. Each future day increase of wealth shall bring. And o'er the past oblivion stretch her wing. Long shall Ulysses in his empire rest. His people blessing, by his people blessed. Let all be peace. He said, and gave the nod. That binds the fates. The sanction of the God. And prompt to execute the eternal will. Descended Pallas from the Olympian hill. Now sat Ulysses at the rural feast. The rage of hunger and of thirst repressed. To watch the foe a trusty spy he sent. A son of Dolius on the message went. Stood in the way, and at a glance beheld. The foe approach, embattled on the field. With backward step he hastens to the bower. And tells the news. They arm with all their power. Four friends alone Ulysses cause embrace. And six were all the sons of Dolius' race. Old Dolius too his rusted arms put on. And, still more old, in arms Laertes shone. Trembling with warmth, 
the hoary heroes stand. And brazen panoply invests the band. The opening gates at once their war display. Fierce they rush forth, Ulysses leads the way. That moment joins them with celestial aid. In mentor's form, the Jove descended made. The suffering hero felt his patient breast. Swell with new joy, and thus his son addressed. Behold, Telemachus. Nor fear the sight. The brave embattled, the grim front of fight. The valiant with the valiant must contend. Shame not the line whence glorious you descend. Wide o'er the world their martial fame was spread. Regard thyself, the living and the dead. Thy eyes, great father. On this battle cast. Shall learn from me Penelope was chaste. So spoke Telemachus, the gallant boy. Good old Laertes heard with panting joy. And blessed. Thrice blessed this happy day. He cries. The day that shows me, ere I close my eyes. A son and grandson of the Arcesian name. Strive for fair virtue, and contest for fame. Then thus Minerva in Laertes' ear. Son of Arcesius, reverend warrior, hear. Jove and Jove's daughter first implore in prayer. Then, whirling high, discharge thy lance in air. She said, infusing courage with the word. Jove and Jove's daughter then the chief implored. And, whirling high, dismissed the lance in air. Full at Eupith's drove the deathful spear. The brass-cheeked helmet opens to the wound. He falls, earth thunders, and his arms resound. Before the father and the conquering son. Heaps rush on heaps, they fight, they drop, they run. Now by the sword, and now the javelin, fall. The rebel race, and death had swallowed all. But from on high the blue-eyed virgin cried. Her awful voice detained the headlong tide. Forbear, ye nations, your mad hands forbear. From mutual slaughter, peace descends to spare. Fear shook the nations, at the voice divine. They drop their javelins, and their rage resign. All scattered round their glittering weapons lie. Some fall to earth, and some confusedly fly. With dreadful shouts Ulysses poured along. Swift as an eagle, as an eagle strong. But Jove's red arm the burning thunder aims. Before Minerva shot the livid flames. Blazing they fell, and at her feet expired. Then stopped the goddess, trembled and retired. Descended from the gods. Ulysses, cease. Offend not Jove, obey, and give the peace. So Pallas spoke, the mandate from above. The king obeyed. The virgin seed of Jove. In mentor's form, confirmed the full accord. And willing nations knew their lawful lord.